All right, what's up, y'all? You're tuning in to Ill Vibe Theory, number one source for hip hop and R&B in the Las Vegas Valley. We're broadcast- broadcasting live on the campus of UNLV, having a really good night. Just a quick rundown of the music that we played. That was Monte Booker with Red Velvet. Also, Mick Jenkins featuring No Name Gypsy with The Waters, or excuse me, Comfortable. Anderson Pack feature in the game with room in here and we're keeping it locked with ill vibes and we have a very 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 special lady on the phone that i'm about to bring on she is an international dj now she is signed with selection radio she does so much she's worked with heavy hitters in the game most recently genuine at her dope dope los angeles r&b party called 143 so we're gonna bring that lady on the line it's none other than so super sam Hello. How are you? I'm really good. I'm just um, chilling on my couch with my dog. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds amazing. It's very exciting. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is amazing. That's awesome. What's up, guys? <laughs> Nothing much. We're honored to have you. Thank you so much for calling in. This is amazing. Thank you. Yeah, of course. For sure. So I just wanted to start off. Um, we obviously just gave the introduction for you, but you may not remember. I'm pretty sure you didn't. But we actually saw you mix live at an event called um, Urban Outfitters Had It Without Walls event in Santa Monica. And yeah. we're a part of a group called Mission Impossible. So I'm sure you're fam- familiar with Samantha Joe Alonzo. Yeah, of course. Awesome, Ooh, awesome. So, that. yeah, and that was, like, the funnest day ever. And I was like, this girl is, like, a crazy DJ. <laughs> and that was, well, that like, was a- two years ago. Yeah, that was a crazy day for you guys. I think you guys all bust in from, like, road tripped in from Vegas. Yeah. And then ran and then partied and then went back. Yeah, and exactly. Was- and you that made was- it, like, a crazy party, so thank you. Yeah, that was rad. <laughs> that was really yeah. cool. So awesome. And you've done like a lot of work with Urban Outfitters too, right? Yeah. Um, for that Without Walls campaign, I did uh, Seattle, New York, L.A., and Hawaii. Yes, I did hear about that. That's so awesome. Yeah, which was really dope. They're, Very they're cool. super dope to work with. Yeah. That's awesome. So we're going to just jump right into this interview while we have you on the line. I know it's super late. Sure. Um, but yeah, so you've been working on your own music lately. So we just have the single that we're going to premiere, Like, which I'm so excited to play. Um, but you've said that a goal of yours is to make a proper EP. What does that entail for mm-hmm. you? Um, well, it's actually in the works right now. Um, and a proper EP to me just has like a a variety of emotions and a variety of textures and I want to have, you know, something cool to dance to, something you can emote with. I want to have like a, an acoustic ballad on there. I just want it proper and very, um, also very indicative of my, of where I'm at in my life. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited. I've been writing every day and recording every day, and um, yeah, I think something should be popping by the summer. Oh wow, that's hmm. soon. Yeah, yeah, it's just soon. <laughs> Very yeah, awesome. But, oh, excuse me. Go ahead. Um, no, that's it. I mean, it's just been really exciting and and so fun preparing for a project like this. Um, it's a whole different um, part of my brain that I use that that I don't use for DJing. It's just mm-hmm. a completely different animal, and that's what's exciting to me is just the challenge of it and and doing new stuff and um, yeah, and being able to express myself in a different way definitely. and being allowed to do that, you know. Yeah, most definitely, and I think yeah. that you have a unique advantage. I guess you could say over other artists, perhaps, because you know what people want to hear and what gets that party started. You invoke emotions with the music that you play while you're mixing. So I think you have like an advantage in that part of what will touch people, which is really cool. Yeah, um, totally. And and it's been really help, helping me, you know, transition from being a DJ to a recording artist is just taking everyone on my journey by way of mixtapes. So, um, like is my new single and I first debuted it 
in the context of a mixtape. So yes. something that sort of a, a medium that people are already used to hearing from me um, and, and then just adding my own track on it and, and kind of being able to express like the mood and and if you like this song that I just sang, you know, you'll like these 20 other songs that I have mixed together with it. And it's really fun. It's it's a cool way to tell a story and, again, share with people. Yeah, that's awesome. I just remember looking at, like, blog posts and it was like, hey, she sings too. And I was like, what? Because I had listened to the mix and it didn't ring a bell at the moment. So that's really cool. Yeah, I, I just kind of want it to creep up on people and, and um, sort of... I think I think there's like a lot to be said for being able to own the discovery of a new artist and I like to be able to give that feeling. So I don't want to like just beat people over the head with like now I'm a recording artist. Mm. It's kind of like I just kind of want to slide it in there and if you realize it's me singing then you just discovered me while listening to me. Yes. If, if that makes any sense. It does. That's exactly um, what happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I like that. And, you know, it's always, um, it's sort of a pleasant surprise. Or if you hate it, then I could just deny that it was me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's not possible. <laughs> Awesome. So you do everything, literally, but you also dabble in production. But um, in terms of getting other people to produce your songs, like what do you generally look for, do you, like in terms of um, yeah production? Um, yeah, I I have dabbled in my own production, but I, for this particular project, I wanted to focus on my vocals. Um, and you can't do every. I mean, you can do everything. And so, I, you know, there's definitely people who do do everything. But um, I wanted to focus on singing. And I have so many talented friends who are so much better at production than I am. Um, and I, I, I like to collaborate <clears throat> with them. And so when I'm looking for a beat, I'm just looking for, I don't know. I think you're just looking for that something. Yeah, and when it happens, you you know it, um, like a good snare. <laughs> I, I don't know. I think, <laughs> and then um, I don't know. I, I think sometimes the beat drives the concept, or mm. sometimes you have a concept, and when you're you know sifting through beats, you, you know you find something that really nails the concept that you're trying to. Um, flesh out so it can happen a number of different ways um making that connection you know yeah, yeah. and do you co-produce <laughs> have you co-produced um, for this project um i haven't but everything's um i i like to keep everything among friends uh, luckily i have some really sick very established friends yeah um, definitely and, and that's exciting um but it's just I, um, yeah, I just let them do their thing. And then I think what happens is uh, along the way, there's like small edits or, you know, like rearranging. Um, and I'm definitely a part of that process. Um, and then, yeah, it all kind of takes shape. And and then for the, the writing too, um, I used to write in my bedroom alone and it would, I would cross everything out and, you know, three hours later I'd walk out of my room like really devastated and mm. like, you know, feeling like I had made zero progress and I doubted everything I wrote down. Um, and then I, um, I found a couple of my old friends, um, good friends of mine who also write and I was really shy, but they offered like, Hey, let's have a writing session. And, um, I was like, okay, but I'm, you know, I'm not really sure. Like, I don't, I don't know. What if I don't know what to say or, you know, I'm not, I'm not the best writer. And, uh, but I walked into the session anyway and like was written that day in wow. three hours. And we just, you know, it's, it's amazing what energy and like collaboration can do. Um, so all of the little ideas, 
I had, um, you know, it, instead of me shutting my own ideas down, I had two other voices telling me, no, keep going mm. and encouraging me. And, um, and, you know, we were just sort of snowballing ideas and, and then, yeah, like was written in three, three hours. And, and that was it for, I was just like, wow, I, I need to, I want to make everything a collaborative process. This is so much fun. Yeah. Way funner than me writing alone in the dark. And <laughs> it, you know? Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm learning so much and it's so fulfilling. Um, the whole process is just, I'm learning every day, like a million new things. Um, and I think that's, dope yeah for sure and while we're talking about that single light can you discuss like your inspiration behind the song because i think it's really cool it's like an independent woman like i'm working i'm doing my thing but you're in a relationship so it's kind of like you just got to accept that i'm you know doing me and when i get there you know it's all good but can you talk about the inspiration that's what i took from it (laughs) yeah no i think you nailed it um yeah like it's definitely about it's just the honest to God truth. Like mm-hmm. I'm, I'm on the road a lot and I know that I have, um, you know, a relationship that, that needs nurturing and care and, but I still got to do what I got to do. And, you know, but as soon as I get home, it's on. So, <laughs> um, that's what that's about. And yeah, I, I think that, um, I think I, I try to be very honest and honestly, like a lot of times I'm just in sweatpants and I'm not trying cause I'm like, yeah, I got my man and I'm just going to wear my sweatpants and my glasses and my retainer and my, <laughs> you know, like not do my hair and he's cool with it and he is, but sometimes you just got to put your, your like sexy dress on and try, <laughs> try. <laughs> and show up. And show up for your man. Yeah. Um, yeah. No matter how busy you are, I think it's just all that balance, um, and that's yeah, sort of what I go through a lot because I'm on the road a lot. Um, yeah. yeah. Is that something that you've gotten better with, or possibly have struggled with in the past? Because you've been a busy woman for a while. Mm, um. Yeah. Definitely a struggle, but it depends on who your partner is and um, how understanding they are, and. Uh, definitely about communication and really putting in the work so I think that over time I've gotten a lot better at it um it's just time zones is hard so it Mm -hmm. always depends on like how far you are like if it's a three hour time difference or if it's a 16 hour time difference Mm -hmm. things get a little hectic and wires get crossed and stuff but um yeah if you if you want it it'll work out Awesome. Agreed. Relationship advice as well. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. <laughs> we're trying, we're trying, we're trying. We're trying. <laughs> right. So we talked production, we've talked songwriting, we talked vocals and singing, and this is now moving forward to events like 143. Uh-huh. So it seems oh, yeah. super dope. We were just talking about it off air and all day today, like, oh my gosh, that seems so dope. I want to go. So, what's your favorite thing about 143? Oh, um, well, there's so many things that I love about it, but my favorite thing is just uh, being able to play Brandy and Monica at like prime time party hour <laughs> and, and watching everyone go ape shit um i mean oops you know what i mean <laughs> um but yeah watching people kind of lose their mind about r&b at a prime time you know time slot mm-hmm. when when i would otherwise have to be playing some sort of like edm or you know some rap banger it's just really funny to see like a thousand people singing monica songs you know as the prime time hit or whatever um and that that really just does it for me um yeah i mean there's so many other reasons why i love this party but that's probably the the main one yeah it seems like a really awesome concept and something that you would think that had been do like something had been happening but it hasn't and i just think it's a really cool thing um hope to go to that one day and i mean you've been taking it no most definitely i would like i know you're taking it to a couple of different cities and you've been experimenting Mm -hmm. but what about vegas 
Oh, I would love to. Um, I think that would be cool. It would make sense, you know? Yeah, we, you guys would come, right? I of mean, course, <laughs> I'll come to Los Angeles, but it's on a Thursday, right? You switch the day? Yeah, we switch the days, and we have a new venue at the Echoplex. Mm. Um, yeah, so it's now it's every last Thursday of the month. Um, it does, we do it once a month just to keep it real special. Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'd love to go to Vegas. It's definitely on my list of places to go. Um, I want to do like a Houston, Atlanta, Vegas. Oh, that's Aww. dope. <laughs> we'll visit all of those three cities. Um, but we definitely been traveling a lot. Um, yeah. You know, to name a few cities, we've, we've done New York City several times and Seattle, Vancouver, um, San Francisco, Hawaii, um, Boston. Mm. And um, yeah, and then next week we're going we're going back to San Francisco for Valentine's Day, oh, and then cool. um, to Honolulu as well. Yeah, San Francisco should be really, really nuts. Yeah, um, it's going to be Valentine's Day with Ja Rule and Ashanti. I wow, see I saw that. that. And I just yeah, couldn't and, even and, believe and, that she made that happen. Oh, my gosh. That's it's amazing. Good. And you just had Genuine recently, country. right? We just had Genuine. Crazy. Um, which, yeah, it, this party is also fun because basically any silly, you know, R&B idea I, we have as a group, we sort of realized, oh, well, this this idea we could actually make it happen yeah. because we're adults <laughs> and we can kind of do whatever we want to do and your kindness so, so super sam as well well <laughs> you know i mean that i guess maybe that helped but like uh yeah I, it was funny because we were just joking one day about like uh oh we should have Cisco, wouldn't that be so funny if Cisco just so did that nice. to us <laughs> in our room all of a sudden and sang song song? Oh, that would be and amazing. We, we were laughing for a while and then we we're like, wait a minute. But really though. But really though, like we could actually do this. So we did it. And then that just sort of opened the floodgates. So, so every time, you know, we'd say something crazy that sounded super out of this world, we'd we'd kind of check ourselves and be like, wait, do we really want to do that? We can actually do that. Like, yeah. we could do it. Um, and so that, that's just sort of always been, like, the vehicle for all of our, um, our entire party. It's mm-hmm. like, what if we did this? All right, let's, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> that's so cool. It's so funny. I was watching, like, a yeah. throwback interview that you had um, with Eddie – uh, fresh off the boat and you know he does everything <laughs> with hype beast yeah. that you had and one thing that stuck out to me that you said you uh, not verbatim but you basically were just saying like if you come up with an idea um or pers- like um a pursuit it's probably worth pursuing just because it was like an yeah. idea that fostered no matter how dumb it sounds so that's funny that exactly. you're saying that still because i mean you've had cisco come like that's cool no absolutely <laughs> i just think that if you can if you kind of have the the resources in the right frame of mind, like any idea is pretty much possible. I mean, that's how this party exists yeah. in the first place. Is just I had this residency that didn't allow me to play rap or hip hop or house, and I was just sort of in a rut mm. about what I was going to play because I just felt very restri- restricted. And um, you know, I I sort of recalled these past conversations I'd have with my two friends about wouldn't it be funny if we just like played slow jams really, really loud. Like (laughs) we should just have a slow jams party. (laughs) And it was a joke at the time, but I remembered that. And I was like, why don't I play slow jams and, and aren't like really mellow R and B and make it that type of night. And that's the kind of music that I like and I could get away with playing it. Um, And so I was like, I think this is our chance. We can do that dumb idea that we had, and mm-hmm. we'll get we'll get to play slow jams really loud, and we'll get free drinks. <laughs> no one will come, and we don't care. And and that's that's how it happened. And that was almost three years ago. Wow. Um, so you know, it just really is like if you have an idea, like really go for it, 
and then the worst that could happen is if it doesn't take off. But, you know, chances are if you believe in it, it, it will. Yeah. So... Yeah. That's so cool. I feel like um, another reason why I really wanted to have you on the show is just really interesting because obviously you graduated from college with an economics yeah. degree and then, you know, you just yeah. decided, OK, I want to do DJing and now you want to, yeah. you know, do music and you're like fearless to do those goals that you have in mind. And I think that's really inspiring. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah. And I do want to correct you in the fact that it is not fearless. It is filled ex- with extreme fear <laughs> um, and trepidation and what have you. But um, I think it's not really about being fearless. It's about still doing it. Mm-hmm. Good point. <laughs> despite, no, that's a really good point. Despite your fear, sort of moving through your fear. I don't know. I'm, I don't really have any answers, but I just like do whatever I think is right and then if that changes, then I change, and then I just keep it moving. Yeah, That's what I can do. Yeah, <laughs> that's really cool. I love that. And, here we go. and we were yeah. talking about um, the Without Walls event like earlier, mm-hmm. which has been our only, unfortunately, yet time that we've seen you live. Which we will see you again, hopefully, really soon. Um, what yeah. are like the, some essentials to a dope party? We're talking about one four three event. Like, what do you mm-hmm. need to have a good party? Mm. Okay, you need a good party. You need, I mean, good music, right? Mm-hmm, you need of a receptive, receptive audience. And you, I mean, when I say like good music, you need someone really like pumping the party. Mm-hmm. So like, if I'm not DJing at my party, I'm like starting the dance floor. <laughs> and if I'm not starting the dance floor, I'm like walking around asking people if they're doing okay. And then mm. if I'm not there, I'm, you know, in line talking to people and like saying like, Hey, you'll, you'll get in. Like, don't worry. Like, what do you, do you need anything? Do you want candy? Like, what can I do to make you have a good night? Like I will do that. Um, so yeah, you just need someone to spread good vibes. And then uh, good music and a lot of alcohol <laughs> and um, some tacos afterwards. Oh, uh, yep. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> good, you need a good sound system. Oh, yeah. Heck For yeah. Sure. That's a good one. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Definitely. So we were talking Cisco, you got Ja Rule mm-hmm. and Shanti coming up. So you've mm-hmm. worked with really huge names in the game, some being mm-hmm. Erica Badu, Boyz II Men, Questlove, etc., etc. And even though you've mm-hmm. probably grown accustomed to it, you had to have geeked mm-hmm. out over somebody at one point. Who was it oh, and yeah. why? <laughs> I'll tell you. Um, oh, this is so embarrassing. But it has a great <laughs> ending, um, so I'll tell it. Um, <laughs> I have geeked out. I geeked out so hard in 2012 when I met A Track. And mm. up until that point, I, he was like my DJ hero. <laughs> um, and I just adored his whole career trajectory. Like, he's just so skillful with it. And then his on Twitter, he. Did a lot. He does a lot of like puns and wordplay, and I was just like, "Oh, this guy's so dorky. I love it." Um, <laughs> so I was just such a big fan, and and I met him backstage at in Central Park. There was a concert there, and I met him backstage, and I started bawling. Oh. Like I knew I was gonna meet him. Yeah, I saw him from a distance, and he was introduced. I was introduced to him, and I just. I don't know what happened to me. <laughs> it has never happened before or after this, but I started sobbing uncontrollably. Like, oh. like when you watch a Michael Jackson live concert DVD and the, the, the kids in Amsterdam are crying <laughs> through the fence. Like, that was me in front of a track in real life. And I was just like, I couldn't get any sentences out. I was just like... Oh. You are my favorite. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's nice to <laughs> And I just started crying, and um, and I was hiding behind all my friends, 
um, while I was talking to him, and he was just like so shook. Oh. And terrified of me because he's like, I don't know why this girl's crying. I like, get her to stop crying. He was so nice though, and I, I managed to say one thing to him. This was like, you know, backstage before a concert, and I, I just, I said to him, I like sniffled, and then I said, I said, if you want to enjoy the show, don't stand next to me. Oh, and then I was so like, cute. "What did I just?" In my head, I was like, "What did I just say?" <laughs> oh. I am such an idiot, and I blew it. And like, I couldn't even have like a human conversation with this person. I'm so dumb. So, um, fast forward to <laughs> <laughs> fast forward to you know, I would see him here and there in the years that followed. And he, it was always just a very, like, I would just be like, hey, and like, hey, and that's it. You know, like, I was just so embarrassed. And um, <laughs> But last year, he came and guest surprise DJed at my party at 143. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, and, and that, to me, was just such a huge benchmark. I mean, that was a big moment. Definitely. This is someone who I couldn't even say hello to without bursting into tears and because he had such an impact on you know, my career and what I wanted to do. And then, you know, just a couple of years later, he's, he's playing at my party that I I worked so hard for and he wants to guest DJ and I'm just like losing my shit. I I mean, sorry, I was just like losing my mind and I, I couldn't believe it. Um, and yeah. And since then, I mean, he's just, I've gotten to play a couple of full gold thingies and, um, and he was just at the most recent 143, and he, he loves the party, and it's just, it's so uh, life-affirming, mm-hmm. you know, just to kind of have that story come full circle like that um, is pretty crazy. No, that is. That's really incredible, <laughs> like how that happened. Yeah. Wow, that's so cool. I, I don't know how I would have acted either. Same. You're not the only one, so <laughs> don't be ashamed. Don't, yeah, I don't, you know, when everyone, everyone who has that, like, oh my gosh moment with uh, a, some, with someone they admire, I just feel so hard for them. You know, I just, I deal with that mm-hmm. feeling. <laughs> and now it's so silly because now I'm just like, oh, hey. <laughs> it's oh, nothing yeah. now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, nothing. <laughs> Dope. So you're talking impacts on career, and that leads me to my next question. Um, I was reading through your Twitter. I was totally stalking you. And it said um, cool. in one of your tweets, in Hollywood, if you don't have three different simultaneous hustles, you're definitely not working hard enough. Um, you have numerous hustles, obviously. We named them all. But uh, mostly you're working within the realm of music. So if you weren't doing mm-hmm. music, what else do you think you'd be doing? Well, I would I would be doing something within music. So before I DJed full time, I worked in fashion PR. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really liked that. So I'd probably still be a publicist. Um, or I've always wanted to be a Laker girl. <laughs> I did so see that. <laughs> I'd probably be a Laker girl if they let me on the squad. I still really, you know, honestly, I just put it out there. Like any chance I can sort of like let the public know that I want to be a Laker girl. Like I'm just hoping one day somebody hears me and lets me be a Laker girl for one day. <laughs> <laughs> just one, just one. <laughs> I learn the dances really fast, um, and then and then I'm just I get to wear the costumes, mm-hmm. and then I get to sit courtside and um, and do the halftime performance. It's all just one day, <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll shut up about it. But, um, yeah, I just really want to do it. I've always wanted to be a Laker girl, um, but yeah, I mean something music related, definitely. Um, but yeah, that tweet came because came about because last week I was on a set for a commercial, and you can't mm. say like which commercial or which brand or whatever. But mm-hmm. um, every person I talked to on set 
just had four different jobs, you know? Wow. And and it was inspiring. I was just like, cool, you do you do production, but you also play the bass for this artist, and then you also have a clothing line, and then you also, you know, mm, and wow. you also walk dogs on the weekends. Like, yeah, <laughs> I get it. Like, um, because you need all the side hustles to supplement your, the one thing you really want, you know? Yeah. But that's, it's that hustle for sure. That's really interesting. I like that a lot. And, you know, speaking of fashion a little bit, um, you're highly regarded in that industry as well. So you've worked with Elle, Vanity Fair, Glamour, and more. So I've always admired your personal style. Where do you get that from? Well, hey. Um, <laughs> thank you. Of course. Where do I get that from? I don't know. I've always been interested in fashion. Actually, So Super Sam was my fashion blog name before it was my DJ name. Mm. and it was, it's only my dj name because i had already bought the domain <laughs> <laughs> well that's so, convenient bum, bum, bum. yeah <laughs> mysteries revealed that's all it was um and it was yeah it was my blog name but i was i mean i was just super interested in fashion so um that that led me into fashion pr and i i made a lot of friends while I was doing that and um, sort of just was always kept abreast of like what was going on. Um, I've also, I've just always been into like sneakers and buying expensive jeans and uh, <laughs> that that's kind of all what I grew up doing. So yeah. Um, yeah. And then personal style wise, I just am very lazy. So that's all. <laughs> <laughs> And then I just try to own that laziness and convince people that it's a style. (laughs) There we go. You've done well. (laughs) Awesome. I'm sorry. What were you going to say? Oh, nothing. Cool. All right. (laughs) Well, what keeps So Super Sam going? Oh, great question. Um, Right now, it's it's really the uncertainty and I've really been so fortunate in the last like few years to kind of take risks and see the reward from them. And I think that's once you kind of get that first little taste of like, uh, of the uh, small payoff for a risk you took, you just want to keep doing that. And, Mm -hmm. um, and I just feel that at this point, in my life, I, I'm a lot more comfortable in my own skin to put myself out um, into the world in different ways. And I still have so much to share that, you know, why not? And, and that's what keeps me going for sure and keeps me waking up in the morning, like, really excited. Um, in the world we live in now, like, no one's really boxed into anything. So there are no ceilings at all and if there you know if there is a lane you can change it you can make your own you can do five different things all from your house and on the Mm -hmm. internet like whatever you want to do it's pretty much possible um so and that's so exciting it is so yeah why not wake up every morning and try to do something that you didn't do before you know Yes. That is so inspiring. I love that. Thank you for reminding. You know, we need to hear that sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, college could get draining sometimes, which I'm sure you can relate to. So that's really inspiring. Are you guys in in school right now? Are you, like, what year are you guys? Yeah, we're in our senior year, so it's getting real. (laughs) It is getting real. It is. What what are you um, majoring in? Um, Both of us are journalism, so. Great. Yeah, it's really fun. Definitely interested in music journalism, so yes. thanks for asking. For sure. Yeah, I mean, just do everything. I have a degree in economics, and I don't even know how I got to what I'm doing now, but it did come from that. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, don't, uh, I guess my only, what I would tell anyone is just don't feel, don't feel so obliged your degree or feel that you need to know what you're doing yeah 
for the next 10 years. Like some people do, very rarely do people really, really know what they want to do for the next 10 years and do it. But I just, for me, I just made so many mistakes and had so many different changes of heart, but I followed it every time. And it sort of has led me here. And, you know, I'm glad I just listened to my gut every time, even though it seemed a little off or my mom was like, what are you even thinking? (laughs) Um, You know, I just kind of stuck to my guns and, and I'm, I'm so happy for it, you know? Yeah. Of course. That's so amazing. Thank you for sharing that and being so open and honest with us. We really did need to hear that. I'm sure other people did, too, who are listening to the show. That means a lot. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. Well, I guess on a much lighter note, we have this awesome single that you are going to premiere for us. Um, So before we do that, do you have any like last comments that you want to add? Anything we didn't ask you that you'd like to say? I would like to say, oh, if you like the song that's about to play, um, you are more than welcome to check out my SoundCloud for more mixes and new releases and um, upcoming events. Um, Yeah. Awesome. And where can we find you on social media? You can find me at most places, online places, at So Super Sam. Awesome. And that mix is called Sup 2, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, perfect. I just want to make sure. So if you'd like to hear this song called Like, actually, um, it'll be on her SoundCloud titled Sup 2, first single. So I want to get into this before we let you go. So if you just want to... Um, Let us know. I mean, we talked about the inspiration for it, but if you just want to introduce it for us, I guess. Yeah, for sure. Um, Okay, you guys, we're about to listen to a a song, an original song that I wrote, um, co-wrote, and am performing on. So it's called Like, and I hope you like. (laughs) All right, here we go. So Super Sam with Like, keep it locked. City to city, I'm on the go You keep on texting when I'm coming home Hold up All right, y'all. So that was just so super Sam with like Thank you so much for premiering that track and taking the time out to do this interview. I really like that song. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, and thank you, Ill Vibe Theory. I had a really nice chat with you guys. Oh, thank you. The pleasure was all ours, seriously. And if 143 comes to Vegas, like, we will be the first ones at the door. Yes. Seriously. Uh, yes. <laughs> but, I mean, I'll drive out we'll to L.A. Like too. I'll, we'll make a trip for that. I've been dying to go for a while now. So that's really awesome Perfect. what you're doing. Come through in the summer. Yes. Yeah, that would be more plausible. That would make right? more sense. We yes. should do that. We will. Most yeah. definitely. Awesome. Well, thank you once again. We wish you the best of luck with all of your endeavors. We never know what you'll do next. <laughs> <laughs> we can't wait to hear your new music in the summer. Oh, I appreciate it, guys. Have a good night. You too. Thank, thank you, you too. so much for doing this with us so late. <laughs> Take care, okay? Yeah, no problem. Okay, bye. All right, bye. Have a good night. All right, y'all. So that was just so super Sam with us on the line. Special shout out to her once again. I really like that. She's a really cool girl. I felt like we were friends. I, I felt like we were <laughs> friends, too, even if she doesn't know it. Um, Christian had to sit out on this one. This was a girl power interview. <laughs> so I was just really excited. Um, but yeah, it's so funny because I was telling Jocelyn, like the way this like came about is I heard that mix. I mean, we've been following her. Um, DJing for like a few years now and I heard that mix and I was like we could probably get her on the show yeah like that's probably possible like she said you know to go after and I was like okay what the heck and then she said she'd do it and I just thought that was so awesome Um, she has a lot of really cool things going for her and I hope that everyone that listened takes heed to the advice that she gave that was some really good advice Um, just go with your heart and um, things will work out even if it doesn't seem like 
you know everything. And that's how right. we kind of feel sometimes. We're like, ah, oh, what are we doing? You know? That's my life right now. I'm like, I'm like pointing at Jocelyn when she's saying stuff. I'm like, that's for you. She's preaching. That's Major for you. Major keys. Major keys. <laughs> Definitely. So shout out to So Super Sam once again with that track like. Again, you can find it on her SoundCloud, So Super Sam. The mix is called Sup 2, or you could just Google the track. Whatever you want to do. Download it. Do your thing. So we will be playing that on the show. But we're going to get back into the mix. We're going to start out with her selection fam, actually. So Sango, Spazzy Rocket, JMK, keep it locked, ill vibes.